Shalom, welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with a Chabad of Southern Delmar and together with my co-host Mark Ronich of Statewide News Service and jbiztechvilly.com. We have a very, very special guest with us, Mr. David Allen Miller at Albany Philharmonic. Welcome. Albany Symphony Orchestra. Albany Symphony. Symphony. Nice to be here. I thought maybe you'd bring a few of the people to play, uh, you know, give us a little... All right. We're between between concerts at the moment. All right. So, so yeah. what is the year for Albany Symphony Orchestra? Do you have a well, break we, for we a while? We basically run from September through the end of May. And because there's so much going on in the summer here in the capital region, we kind of go dark for the summer. Mm -hmm. But we have at least one or two or many more events every month. So oh, we have that's a big great. concert every month, children's concerts, a big American music festival in May that's coming up. Lots of different and events. You, and you have a uh, uh, relationship with the Troy Music Hall, which is a beautiful building. We're very fortunate in this area, as you know, to play in one of the great concert halls of the world, the Troy Symphony Music Hall, but we also play in the beautiful Palace Theater yes. in Albany, which is our, one of our regular homes. Those are both our regular homes. And then in May, the American Music Festival, we take up to MPAC, to RPI, to the beautiful Mm -hmm. basically brand new performing brand new. arts center there, yeah. yeah. And so we play in all those venues. And I know the Troy Music Hall is acoustically sound. It is one and of the great acoustics yeah. of the world. And, uh, but MPAC, the, when they built beautiful. it, was that it's also beautiful. the acoustics? Very are? excellent acoustic, okay. yeah. So we really are fortunate to play in three beautiful venues, and we've also played a great deal up in Saratoga at the new gorgeous Filene, and not the Filene, the, um, oh, that wonderful concert hall that they have up there now, the... Uh, it's just a beautiful new concert hall. You mean the Massey Center or no? No, it's, uh, now you're going to embarrass okay. me. Okay, no, you that's fine. Move, move on. See, I, you that's know, fine. It's, I'll come back to it. That's you know, I, have this, notes. I once asked a question and I interviewed Theodore Bikel and oh, huh? just was saying about Broadway was so expensive and saying the youth, you know, to pay such a ticket for the youth. I was wondering also, we're talking about the young people. I mean, just throw my credentials in. I played four years in the <laughs> piano and I played the French horn. I was first French uh -huh. horn for my high school. So just to show you, I know uh -huh. a little bit of music, but no, I'm just kidding. But I, I mean, I do appreciate music, that's for sure. But, you know, a little bit the youth, you know, they're into the guitar, that heavy metal, and, you know, if you want to call it music, but um, well, it may we be. We spend a lot of time with kids. It's the Zankel Hall. That's okay. this beautiful new whole performing arts that they built Skidmore. It's Skidmore, Skidmore College? College? Yeah, oh, so we've done a, okay. we played occasional concerts up there. We love it up there as well. So we have lots of great concert halls. But about education, yeah. the Albany Symphony yeah. is extremely involved in education, and We've got groups and individuals going out to schools. We have a whole program called Adopt a School where we go to three of the biggest school districts, Albany, Troy, and Avril Park, and meet with every second, third, or fourth grader in the district and uh, introduce the instruments to them in the year before they pick their instruments. We have a family series. We have Tiny Tots that we do at Temple Ohav Shalom every year. We take up that up to Saratoga. Uh, we have student tickets for the regular concerts. So, And the wonderful thing about our region is, unlike the big cities, there are so many really vibrant uh, music programs in the schools that still exist. So even though the general trajectory has been ever more difficult, you know, with teachers being laid off and uh, in our region, we still have incredibly vital music programs. Absolutely. So we have lots of kids playing instruments yeah. and uh, lots of kids now really interested in orchestra. I just want to have the audience, know, uh, viewers, know about your background because you grew up in Los Angeles. I did. And 1961 you were born. I was. So you're, what, 53? I guess I am, okay. 53, yeah. And I, uh, you know, how was it, the transition coming back, coming to Albany, it was and, wonderful. I, I, I mean, lived Los in... Los Angeles is a little very different. So. Is a little di the weather's a little different, yeah. I'm told. A little bit different, but very similar. But uh, I went to uh, college in, in Northern California, to UC Berkeley, and then I went to Juilliard in New York for a, a master's degree, and then I went back to Los Angeles. So I lived in New York, and, oh, and I conducted the New York Youth Symphony when I was in Juilliard for six years. So I lived in New York, I loved it, I got to know it really well, and then I went back to LA and was the assistant and the associate conductor with the Philharmonic there, and loved that too, but then I got the Albany job and I happened to have married a wonderful <laughs> young lady who's my, my wife, yes. Andrea, from, who's from New York City. And so we thought it would be nice to come back to the East Coast and be nearer to her parents. And so Albany seemed like the perfect place and the job was open, so I took the job. So I've been here now 21 years and I just, I love it here. Well, the, we, we the, all love uh, here. the Albany Symphony Orchestra was founded in 1930 as I was not involved in that. <laughs> right, 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 right. But as a, under a different name, the People's Orchestra of Albany. That's right, in the height of the Depression. Right? And you are, and since 1930, you are the longest tenured 
uh, conductor of the Albany Symphony. I am. That's just amazing. You can't seem to get rid of me. It's true. Well, I, I love it here, and, and the orchestra and I have well, really we grown. we love you. Well, thank you. I we've, grown, you we've grown together, and the orchestra's <laughs> playing it an unbelievable level, you know, a real world-class level. Now, and, tell us so. your, uh, your, uh, your, fa your history of uh, Andre Previn, uh, who's well, another great conductor. Yeah, but, you know. I was, I, when I was living in New York, uh, they, they had a wonderful thing in Los Angeles as part of the Philharmonic there called the Summer Institute. And Andre Previn was the music director then, and I was invited out to be a fellow at the Institute. So I went for two summers, and I got to work with Previn, and he ultimately hired me to be one of his assistant conductors. So I spent about three of my five years out there really assisting him and doing a lot of concerts there, particularly the, the young people's mm -hmm. concerts, and uh, you know, working with him and learning from him and spending time with him. And so... Uh, he was a, he is and was a, a wonderful, interesting man. And but you had to fill in for him oh, in 36-hour notice. I did, that's true. In fact, the second week I was there as the assistant, uh, he had a really big program, including this big Richard Strauss uh, mm -hmm. uh, tone poem, Thus Spake Zarathustra, and he got bronchitis. And so I had to step in on 36 hours notice, and, and I got uh, really nice reviews, mm -hmm. and it went really well. It was kind of like... I don't know, it was like, in a can like a kid in a candy store, because here I was with the biggest, loudest, most exciting possible great orchestra, and it went very well. So I got a lot of opportunities as a result of that in the subsequent three years I was there. No, so that's I great. Had a great time. Well, now, there. you also were brought, I'm sorry, you also were brought back to L.A. recently in that you won a Grammy. I did go and back, And you had to fly yeah, really. all the way to the West Coast, break my heart, right. to yeah, accept yeah. the Grammy. Tell the audience about what, what category it was and... Well, Why the, it's not here now. And right. right. <laughs> um, the Grammys, of course, are given for recording. And so we had a, a, a wonderful CD come out about, about eight months ago by a, a living American composer, John Corleano, one of the great living American composers who's in his mid-70s and had written two quite wonderful pieces that we recorded, I think, in 2007, so a few years ago. And it took a long time to post-produce them and to do all the editing and everything, and they were released in the fall by Noxos, which is probably the largest classical record company still in existence that's based in Hong Kong. And it was very well reviewed and it was a really beautiful disc of a percussion concerto and a, a piece for voice and orchestra. And um, I don't know how these things work exactly, but I think the record company is allowed to submit proposals for pieces, for, for recordings that the Grammy nominating committees can consider. So much to my delight, uh, I guess this was in late December, uh, the Grammy nominations were announced and our recording was uh, nominated in the solo cl classical solo instrumental category, which means generally soloist with orchestra. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the first time the orchestra's ever been nominated for a Grammy. And of course, the company we were in was the New York Philharmonic with Yefim Bronfman and great European orchestras. And so I didn't think we have a, a big chance of winning, but just being nominated was a great honor. Well, but my very wise wife said, you have to go just in case. So she put me on a plane and we da my son and I dashed out there. We, I had a concert the night before, so we, took, we drove down to Newark and we took the 7 a.m. flight and got there an hour before the thing and drove across town and got there just in time. And it, much to my delight and amazement, we, we won the award. Uh, and that was a really big, was exciting it, deal for us. Was it off camera from the Grammys that was shown? Well, the show that you see on television yeah. is the evening. It's really a, it's a, I'd, I'd never actually seen the, I'm, I'm ashamed to say okay. I'm from Los Angeles, so I watched the Academy Awards, right. but I hadn't really watched the Grammys. It's really a music uh, performance program because yeah. they only announced the 10 sort of most significant pop music awards, you know, best new solo artist, best album of the year. It, meanwhile, there are 70 other categories, rap and right. folk and, and uh, right. gospel and, your and, group, and, and, and your classical category, yeah. and jazz that are all given out that afternoon. So you come 1 o'clock, there's a somewhat more informal thing, and they go through these 70 awards. And, and we were right smack in the middle, but I had Steve Martin in the bluegrass category <laughs> sitting five rows behind me. And so it was quite a fascinating group of musicians from all different genres. So we won what I was particularly impressed delighted and impressed by was it used to be long ago, 15 years ago, in, when, when uh, commercial recording was, much, was a much bigger deal before mm -hmm. the advent of the internet and digital downloads and streaming, 
there were probably 15 classical categories of every, in addition to all the other, there were probably 200 categories altogether, but 15 of them were classical. Now there are really only three categories that orchestras can even be nominated in. So it's a very small number of categories that you can be considered in. So we won one of those three cherished billets there that was really exciting. I got two, two thoughts on it. it were you, is there video of that informal luncheon? It wasn't even a luncheon. It's just well, a, 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 a it's like the Academy yeah. Awards, actually. Okay. It's, uh, Cindy but, Lauper was the, was the uh, MC. MC. It was quite a, yeah. quite a group. But, but yes, you can go on the Grammy, Grammy.com site, and I think they still have the acceptance speeches up. So there's you know, a little clip of the announcement and my coming up and saying my little 20 second oh, you know, thank yous to yeah. John Corleone and to the amazing Albany Symphony. And to your wife. I didn't thank uh, my wife. Uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, do any personal well, you thank do it you. Now. <laughs> Actually, it was very sweet. When you go backstage after you win, they say you get to do Interview. a supplemental thing. Right. So that's when I thanked my wife and my children. And my, <laughs> but on the stage, I wanted to keep it very short and sweet. Okay. So I mainly thanked the orchestra who, right. who champion living American composers and put that at the center of what they do, which I think is what makes us so unique. And, and also, did you get a seat in the nighttime Grammy? And then did I you got have a seat your tux and, I, and all that? And I got a seat, and we got a really good seat, because mm -hmm. you know, as, as, an, as a nominee, all the nominees get seats at the evening program. And I must say, having one in the afternoon, I had this thoroughly delightful time. And my 14-year-old was with me, who's a real aficionado of all that music you were just bashing, uh -huh. the, the pop and the rock and the rap. Yeah, right. And uh, he was a great, uh, we had a great time together. So it was really exciting. So you have that special moment, and I'm sure you have a we lot did. of pictures, I hope. Selfies. Yeah, good pictures, some pictures, yeah. When the, you were walking on the red carpet, the red did they carpet, all, did, we have that. Did all the paparazzi say, stop, come over here, no, come over here. No, I wasn't no, no, terribly no, no. noticed by the paparazzi. They were busy with the famous, famous people. People, but it still, still was awesome. quite a thing. And what's yeah, been so awesome. amazing about it is that I think what has struck me, particularly coming back home and how much pride there is in the community, sure. and people yeah. stop me at the supermarket. And <laughs> today I went to, with my son to buy a slice of pizza, and the guy who gave us the pizza said, so has it arrived? Yeah. The, the, the actual award. And, I, and the man who owns the pizza parlor uh, at the Village mm -hmm. Deli in, in Slingerlands, Nick, he said, do you have it yet? And, and the fact is that it takes them months and months to send you the actual thing. So mm -hmm. it, it's not supposed to arrive till mid-May or something. But to everybody's kind of vested because I think it belongs to all of us. It's the first time I think that the, it's certainly the first time that the Albany Symphony's ever won a Grammy. I don't know who else regionally has ever won a Grammy. Well, I'm sure that but, you're going to uh, have a huge case well, that's going to be well lit <laughs> and you're going to have it sponsored and corporate sponsors Something are going like to come that. and Maybe. say, we are proud of you. Right, you're right, going right. to put your development that's director good, into motion to good make this ideas. happen, you see? But it's been a beautiful... I'm here to raise money, to help you raise money. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> what I think is wonderful about the Grammy is that since so many people are aware of the Grammys outside of yes. music lovers, I mean, it's just got real universal awareness Yes. People who haven't really been that conscious of what the orchestra's up to are suddenly aware. And so our last concerts were really yeah. virtually well, sold out. Yeah. And I think there's a real uh, momentum that's built as a result of that, which is very exciting Mazel for us. Mazel tov. It's so very happy nice. for you. Yeah. It's really so great. Happy. It really is, it is probably an achievement of a lifetime. But well, it was an exciting uh, thing. You know, I want to just even go to square one, though. Maybe to explain this, I say I'm a rabbi and I, I know something about music, but I'm, not, I'm surely no expert. But just what does a, con a conductor do? And, and what's so important about a conductor? Obviously, you have good musicians. They're not playing the instruments. Right. Just the most basic thing. What, Nothing. What makes a good... We don't do anything. We yeah. stand there, we beat figure eights, and the beautiful music comes out, and we take all the credit. Yeah. In fact, there's a famous quote from Aaron Copeland, you know, who was a composer, sure. yeah. but he loved, to conduct, he loved to conduct his own music. And he said, conducting is the most wonderful thing because he said... If it, if it goes well, you take all the credit. And if it goes badly, you say, this was a terrible orchestra. I couldn't do anything with them. So the truth is that the conductor, conducting is, in essence, not a very old field in that it's maybe 150 years really? old. Before that, orchestras were very small, and the first violin player or someone at the keyboard would sort of bounce their head to keep the time. And as orchestras got bigger and concert halls got bigger and audiences got bigger, they really needed someone to really just hold it together. So at my very most basic function, I'm like a big metronome that holds everything together. But at a more subtle level, what's evolved as music has, as the pieces we play get more complicated in the 19th century, Mahler and Bruckner and uh, Stravinsky, and you really need someone to help everybody negotiate coordination. So it's, it's really about balancing who, how loud is loud enough, the right amount of loud, who comes in where, how everybody plays together, blending, and which parts come out. And so it's almost like a strategic, you're like the coach, but you're the coach who participates in the game. And it's a fascinating field because, of course, you're not actually making the sound. The musicians are doing all the actual physical sound making. Um, and well, yet a great conductor can make a performance really exciting and a lousy conductor can make a great bunch of musicians sound really awful. Yes, so well, when you point your baton yeah. to the 
uh, to let's say the cymbals or to the French horn or whatever. I mean, they have to play when you point. No, they have the music in front of them. So, so if I point to them at the wrong time, they're probably smart and won't play. So if you point to the violins when the French horn is supposed to play, the violins won't come in. They're going to a few not very clever violins might come in, but but it'd be my fault. It wouldn't be their fault. So the the job is much more than pointing the people when it's their turn to play. It's really about how we prepare prepare each each concert. And so we 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 meet four or five times in the week before we give a concert for two and a half, three hours each right. session, and we shape and build and stop and start and practice the hard parts and put it all together. And in a way, I'm really about helping them elicit the best performance they can in the most coordinated way. And that's what I'm saying. It's not just a matter of timing. It's just more maybe the enthusiasm. Like it is. A really lot of it's very it's cosmic. It. I mean, when you think of some, a great conductor like Leonard Bernstein, a big part of what made him so extraordinary was this unbelievable sort of searing charisma mm -hmm. that he supplied to everything he did. I mean, it was so uh, magneti magnetic, magne magnetizing. <laughs> uh, so, so there's some of that, but it's also often very much like... Um, like a mechanical engineer, you're fitting the parts of the puzzle together and you're helping. Everybody has their own part in front of them and knows their own part, but how those parts interact is really a, a big job of the conductor. When I mention the word Roscoe, what does that bring? Brings to, to my mind William Kennedy right. uh, and this wonderful violin concerto that we commissioned right. uh, about Roscoe. And right. I, I should mention, because you know, if people haven't heard, if your listeners haven't heard, or your viewers, viewers. Ha, if your viewers and listeners <laughs> haven't heard the symphony lately or at all, we've got a whole bunch of really great concerts coming up that I can certainly just tell you a few highlights of. And we have a wonderful family concert. I don't know, this is... Well, we, we th this is supposed to be timeless. Because timeless. we're supposed to... Right, well, things know, that are happening so. now about... <laughs> Uh, March 23rd, a fabulous family concert, yeah. uh, string training, where I play Coach Dave, and we, we, the whole orchestra, it's about uh, sort of an analogy between, or a metaphor uh, of musicians as sports figures. Um, uh, April 12th, a beautiful concert at the Palace Theater uh, about uh, Rimsky-Korsakov Sherazade, and we've got a wonderful young violinist in her teens from the West Coast doing uh, the Barber Violin Concerto, and then we have this big American Music Festival at the end of every season in, in mid-May up at MPAC, and that's a whole celebration actually of women composers, so we have mainly mm -hmm. composers who happen to be women on the program. But there. tell me more about the Violin Concerto from Kevin Beaver's... Uh, oh, about Roscoe? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's some, some years ago. Well, we do a lot of... The beautiful thing about living composers is that they, if you commission them to write a new piece, they can design to suit. I can't call Beethoven up and say, could you write me a concerto inspired by a William Kennedy novel? But I could call the composer of that piece, Kevin Beavers, up and say, read this book and then try to figure out a way to write a concerto about it. So in the case of that piece, uh, Kevin did exactly that. He read the book. He pulled out three or four... It, uh, mm -hmm. parts of dialogue that he thought were really inspiring and then he shaped the three movements, four movements of the concerto from that and then we did this, this wonderful thing since Bill Kennedy is such a great local figure and a champion of the arts and a friend of mm -hmm. ours Bill sat on stage and read the passage before each movement so it was oh, kind of like a literary musical experience we do a lot of those kinds of things we have a whole project that we do most years called Capital Heritage Commissions where we do a whole set of commission pieces uh, about some important aspect of um, of capital region mm -hmm. culture. We did a whole day on the Saratoga battlefield. We did Tiffany interiors in various churches around the region. We did uh, something where we visited the AME temple, which used to be, I guess, Beth Emmett yes. con congregation. The downtown. Wilborn Temple. The Wilborn Temple, yes. right. Uh, so we've, we've sort of celebrated the architecture and the history and the heritage of our region through newly commissioned pieces. That's the beautiful thing about being able to commission living composers. Well, so let me ask you about, uh, I've been to several concerts at the sy symphony concerts, and I've seen you. Uh, perform and you're just absolutely energetic and just I I'm watching you more than I'm watching the musicians the way you animated you're just phenomenal well, thank you and for I that just, but they're much more singing than I am you shouldn't be watching me you be but, watching I'm, but you know what it's just phenomenal it's part of the show and, and yeah. you are part of the show and, uh -huh. and I wanted to ask you about Cowboy Dave Yes, and that's an alias that you have well I, so, I do a lot of, of, of these wonderful young I people's was concerts at the concert when you were Cowboy Dave. Yeah, and I've I done was a little I, kid. I oh, was really? a little kid. No, I I felt like a little kid. Oh, you felt like a little <laughs> kid. <laughs> well, I do. We do three young people's concerts Sunday afternoons dur during the year. Three what we call the Sunday symphonies, and those are really geared toward kids between the ages of about five and eleven or twelve. I was and ten. You were ten <laughs> at the time. Or you thought you were ten, and uh, and so I try to think of really theatrical, fun right. programs that are just under an hour 
to do that will really get kids interested in mm -hmm. the orchestra and in aspects of music. So I do a show where I play Beethoven and with a big wig and I come in a time machine. It's called Beethoven Back to the Future and I do a whole hour about my music and we play my music and the kids join me in singing in the Ninth Symphony. And I do a Mozart show about opera where I play Mozart and I do a show called Raiders of the Lost Symphony and the show I was telling you about, I'm, <laughs> I'm Coach Dave, but maybe one of the, the characters I, I've played on these concerts that kids seem to really respond to the yeah. most is Cowboy Dave. Right. And it started with a, a show about Aaron Copeland's music right. where a kid's trying to write a paper about Aaron Copeland and out of his closet steps Cowboy Dave, the roughest, toughest Copeland scholar this side of the Pecos territory. And I take him on this sort of virtual tour of Aaron Copeland's America, from the Appalachian Mountains to El Salon, Mexico, and so on and so forth. And uh, so that show was really successful, so I started doing other Cowboy Dave shows. So those are great concerts. I, I hope that, you know, if anybody's watching, uh, parents with little kids, young kids, or grandparents, I find that the people, you know, 70 and older love these programs as much as the kids 12 and under. Because people in this area who are not going to the orchestra, are not aficionados of the orchestra, r relate to right. the simplicity and what you're on a childlike level. Well, it's not even that, because they may it, not know that much I'm... about about music and what we do, and exactly. these, these concerts are all about elucidating what that is. Right. So they're, you know, like good children's television, they exist on many planes. They exist on a fun for kids level, but right. they also want to exist on a much more philosophical plane. So a, a, an adult who knows about culture generally, but not that much about orchestras, can come and learn a great deal about music Absolutely. from those Absolutely, and I was one of those, yes. Oh, good. So. <laughs> now, I'd like to ask, you know, you, you obviously you know everything about music, but just on a personal level, what is your favorite composer and... Oh, I have lots and lots of them, and it's like, uh, like you know. What's your favorite child? Right? Yeah, <laughs> so I, I, it's impossible to say. What, what normally happens, as happens with many of us, is the, the one I'm vested in the most at the moment is the one I love the most at the moment. Mm -hmm. So when I'm working on an exciting new piece, I get very excited about that. When I'm working on Beethoven's Eroica Symphony, I get very mm -hmm. excited about that. Uh, it, 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 that's what I love about my job is I'm, it's one of these lifelong learning jobs. I'm mm -hmm. always doing new repertoire and pieces that I've never done before, and I'm always trying to digest, to enjoy assimilating, figuring out, solving the challenges of different pieces. So that's that's a big part of the fun of the job. You do uh, like, I mean, uh, the Beethoven, just, you know, you're innovative. I, you know, I hope the audience, I surely see that, you know, when you're on the cutting edge. But on every just, concert. Like, very classic. Uh, but on every concert, we do the hits. I mean, we just did the Eroica. We're doing Scheherazade. We did uh, the Brahms second piano concerto this year. You know, we do all the classics. But what makes us a little different from other orchestras, a lot of orchestras are afraid of anything unusual or new or different. We celebrate new and different, so we put something interesting and new and different on the first half, part of the first half. So usually a third of the concert is new and two thirds is old. Sometimes half the concert's new and half the concert's old. And once a year during the American Music Festival in May, everything's new. And mm -hmm. frankly, a lot of us, myself and the audience and the orchestra, think that's the most exciting concert of the year because you just discover all sorts of exciting new art. Well, really I recently thrilling. went to uh, uh, Proctor's in Schenectady to see uh, Yitzhak Perlman. Oh, right. Huh? Yeah. And that was absolutely phenomenal. And he played a lot of the uh, uh, unknown you know, works of, right. of his favorite people. Some beautiful pieces, and it was yeah. absolutely. Were you there? No? I, I was you, working that night. It was working. so interesting. I think he had a pretty full house. Yes. We had two full houses in Troy. We had a Saturday night and a Sunday. And we had Beethoven's Eroica on the program, the second oh. half, the third symphony. And we had a new piano concerto from Joan Tower, living American composer. Mm -hmm. And the response to the Joan Tower was absolutely equal to that of the Beethoven. Now, people I, loved them both. I got to ask you, this yeah. is the Jewish view. How much do you connect with the Jewish community to get them involved with the orchestra? You, you well, I connect very like much with the Jewish... How dare you ask I, me that? I, no, I don't no, know. No, no. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm trying to think how to answer it. I connect very much with the Jewish community because I'm a member of Temple Beth Emmeth and I'm close to Rabbi Spien and I know Rabbi Ornstein over at Ohav and my kids right. went to preschool there and we're very connected to lots of lots of people. My, my daughter goes to the Sunday afternoon Nifgash. Uh, so we have a lot of connections to the Jewish community and a lot of closeness to the Jewish community as to how well, I specifically orchestra, market. No, yeah, how do you market the orchestra to bring in the classes, you know, the children or the adults from, because quite frankly, I don't see that. Yeah, I think and we I could know. do more of that. Okay. I, and I hope that, you know, since Rabbi Spin is on our board, hopefully oh. he can help us figure out well, how to do that. Well, maybe my website could help. And your website can help as well. Com. And I just always assume that Jewish people are huge culture lovers, so they're going to find the orchestra. But that's probably naive. You're probably right. Who's that the I, president of the orchestra? Uh, the, the, the chairman of the orchestra chairman. is Marisa Eisenman, who happens to live in southern 
Vermont, but she's very involved with her synagogue. And, uh, and Steve Lobel. And Steve Lobel is very much involved. Oh, and right. We have a lot of members of the Jewish community who are very involved with the orchestra. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that you're right that f in a more formal way, uh, sort of, you know, really working on making sure that the entire Jewish community knows about the orchestra and, and comes down and experiences yep. it is a great thing. That would be wonderful. So, yeah, yeah I really, uh, I mean, did you ever think of doing a, cla a classical night of just let's say, Israeli music, Jewish music. Well, we haven't done it a whole night, but we have had a klezmer a clarinet yeah. concerto. David Krakauer, a great klezmer <clears throat> clarinetist, came. And I, I would love to, we, we have a, there's a composer I'm hoping to feature who's one of Israel's finest composers, Avner Dorman. And so we've talked with the Jewish community about a couple of projects that have to do with Jewish culture. Great. I hope we can make some of those Looking happen. Looking forward to that. Tell me about your uh, connection and how your paths cross with Yo-Yo Ma. Well, um, mainly through... Um, I guess they, they crossed before I came to Albany and that when I was still in Los Angeles, I did some summer concerts with him and then I did a concert in Denver with him. And then when I came to Albany, uh, the first time he came, it wasn't even my invitation. It was the reopening of the Palace Theater after the beautiful renovation they did. The Palace hired Yo-Yo and they hired the orchestra to play with him. But subsequent to that, he and I have become you know, very good friends and you know, we only see each other every two or three years when he comes to play with us. Um, but I, I'm in email contact with him and I love him and he's a... He's every bit as great a mensch as he seems uh, when you see him on television or hear him on the radio. He's, he's one of the most giving and open and interested, curious people in the world. They're just well, a beautiful since you, person. Since you have an email address for him, maybe you could tell him as an opening for the guest of the Jewish View. We can oh, right. <laughs> no, I'm pitching well, you. No, I'm just joking. I don't know when he's next coming back, but it's, my goal is to get him to come at least every couple of years because we just... It's such a no, privilege he is phenomenal. to share the stage yeah. with him. And he's a real humanist. He's just a great that's, human being. That's great. I just yeah. uh, I enjoy his, uh, you know, his music so much. And, Everything you know. that's written and said Let about him is true. Let me something. I had he's actually a, a few Russian. Now, Europeans, I mean, I know there's a lot of uh, kids that are taking instruments and a lot of adults, but it seems like even the Russian Jews, I mean, uh, they come to me and say, Rabbi, I need help, you know, as a rabbi, and I says, well, there's only one orchestra in Albany, and they, you oh, know, musicians, musicians, musicians who are now living here. Yeah, uh -huh. they, they want to come to here, or do you have an opening? I'm right. just, it seems like, um, it's unfortunate, because they, they, they're they experts, I mean, they're professionals, to say the least. Right. I mean, they're great caliber, I'm not one to judge, but I could, you know, they say, and I can hear it. And it just, it's, a, it's a shame because there really aren't that many openings for well, a professional it's a, it's a, musician. It's true, it's a very competitive field, and these are highly skilled, highly professional people who've spent their lives dedicated to playing the violin or the trombone or whatever they may play, um, and there are just not enough orchestras in mm -hmm. the country or the world to have room for these people. So it's become incredibly competitive, and it's, it's very hard to make a living. I, I have a son who's a cellist. My oldest child is very avid about cello playing and would love to have his career be a cello, as a cello player, and I'm forever w warning him. You know, He will do and should do what he wants to do with his life. It's not my place to tell him what to do, but I'm always you know, giving him cautionary notes about just how difficult it is to make a living as a cello player, mm -hmm. uh, because I, it is. I told this, the pianist, and he was professional, I, so I, I was trying to help. I'm a rabbi. He says, maybe she give lessons. And my, my wife looked at me. Mm -hmm. She could have killed well, me but, over but, here. But, says, I says, what do I do? I'm trying to help. Most she musicians, says part, of their, part of their life is you know, giving lessons. I mean, even, even the best musicians spend a lot of their time giving lessons, t teaching young mm -hmm. people. And I always think that the beauty of playing an instrument is all the things you learn from it, from playing with other people, from being in youth orchestra. We have a beautiful Empire State Youth Orchestra here in the Capital Region that my daughter's in and my son was in. And, um, and from the, just the discipline of solving the challenges, the physical problems, the intellectual problems, it's a great way to build awareness and, and, to, and, and mental acumen. But it doesn't mean that everybody has to go and be a professional. That's the, that's the hard thing, is that it, it's hard to sort of get off that hamster trail and do it just for love. Yeah. The Orchestra changes, the number of instruments in the orchestra changes, but give me an idea of approximately how many instruments Well, we have make 63 uh, members who are the core members of the orchestra. So when okay. we play, those 63 are basically the ones who are invited. And which instruments do those 63 well, play? Well, it's basically a full... We're running full, out of time, that's oh, why. That's I'm okay. Saying. It's a full orchestra, violin, you know, so-and-so number of violins, violas, cellos, basses, woodwinds, brass, etc. Sometimes we play with a, a chamber orchestra, 35, 40 musicians. Sometimes the orchestra gets very big depending on the repertoire, the pieces right. we're playing. So rimsky korsakov is probably going to be more like, Scheherazade is going to be more like 75 or 80. Um, but it's basically a 60-ish member orchestra. What's the weirdest or le least known 
an instrument that's been in one of your orchestras? <laughs> oh, I, I, we've, we've had lots of interesting soloists. I mean, the, the, orchestra, the instruments in the orchestra are the standard instruments. They're tubas, right. and there's tuba and percussion and double basses, lots of interesting contra bassoons, double bassoons. But we've played with a lot of folk instruments. We've had Chinese uh, lute. Uh, we've had uh, mm. Chinese lute, uh, yeah. the, the, the pipa, and also a Chinese violin, uh, the arhu, and a lot of Chinese instruments. And, and we've had illin pipes, a uh, great... Uh, um, Irish sort of uh, thing, and so we've had a lot of folk instruments that have played as solo with the orchestra, the way Yo-Yo Ma would, but on, on these special sure. instruments. Yeah. Uh, but in the orchestra, it's mainly a, a standard Western-style symphony orchestra with all the usual instruments. Well, Mazel Tov on everything that you've been doing. May you be here for many, many more years. You've really enriched the Albany area. Well, thank you. It's my pleasure to be here and thank to you. work and live in this and great community. He's got a blessing for you. Oh, he's a blessing. Oh, a blessing. Dad. Again, a great remark saying you're doing such good work and music. I just feel that I, one thing that I want to personally say that I, I do, I did play, I do go once in a while to, or now I'm more enthused maybe to come to more, and I hope our viewers will also do, you know, to support the fine arts. It's not a baseball game, but, you know, the, you get more out of going to a concert than you, you'd watch a baseball game, and I'm sure people feel that way. Should continue with good success and good health, and we wish you the best. Thank yes. you both very Be much. Well.